everyone and welcome back to the channel once again. So in today's video we are not at home as I always say when we're on a visit but today we've actually headed over to central London. Well it's not quite central London is it? Just on the east side. So this is quite mad because we're at a running farm and we are just by Canary Wharf which is just over there is that right? Yep it's up there. So it's a really cool one guys. I'll explain a lot more as we get onto it. We've got Tom here who is the farm manager. Yep, so lovely to have you. Massive thank you for having me and I'll explain a bit more while Tom will explain a bit more as we get into the video because you're all probably quite confused. I hope you enjoy it guys. If you do please tap that like button, subscribe to the channel and once again I hope you enjoy. My name's Tom Davis and I'm the farm, park and open space manager here at Mudshoot Park and Farm. Now I didn't have the usual route into farming. Born and raised on a council estate in South London. Um, visited my local city farm when I was eight years of age and decided that I wanted to get involved. Very lucky for me, my parents nurtured that and took me there every weekend and every spare school holiday and everything like that. And it just grew from there. Um, went to college, etc., done all of that. And then I found myself working on city farms and even some big, bigger commercial farms throughout that time. Um, currently, the uh, farm manager here at Mudshoot Park and Farm in the heart of East London. Uh, we are uh, London's only rare breed survival trust approved conservation centre, looking after some of the UK's rarest. Uh, breeds of farm livestock um, and also as well we're one of uh, 12 city farms in London so as part of being that group of city farms we're free for people to come into because we bridge the gap between the, the town and the country teaching people about food, farming and just high welfare, extensive regenerative agriculture right here in the heart of London. So guys, that was really cool what Tom explained there, exactly what they're getting up to here on the farm. But one of the things I am most interested in personally is obviously the sheep. And you were telling me before, you have three breeds here and you've just gone into a fourth. So here we are in with the Norfolk Corns, is that right? Yes, these are um, a breed that I've had for a few years now. And the Norfolk Horn is a rare breed and yeah. is on the Rare Breed Survival Trust watch list. Um, but one of the things that uh, a lot of people don't realize is that the Norfolk Horn is the paternal side of the Suffolk. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of attributes within the Norfolks um, that uh, they gave over to the Suffolk. And to be honest with you, I wish that I would have got the Norfolks a lot sooner. Yeah. They're a fantastic breed of sheep. Good mothers, milky, they, they fatten well. Uh, and also as well in the show ring, yeah. they're a very striking breed yeah. and they do show themselves off well. Uh, sometimes people are a bit put off by the horns, but you know, you'll see through the breeds that I've got here, I generally air towards sheep that have got yeah. horns, um, but the Norfolks are brilliant and these, these are my breeding ewes and we've got a range of uh, different ones they've all been scanned we do scan everything here so blue dots are singles red dots are twins and that one there in front of us there she decided that she wanted to have triplets this year <laughs> we um, all love that <laughs> exactly and the, the, since I, she was one of the f foundation ewes that I had and every year I've had her for the last three years or four years sorry it's always been a single tup lamb she's produced yeah. for me and this year, she'll, she'll probably have three I was lambs. literally about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, on about the sheep here, you've had great success in recent years and way before that in the show ring too. So especially with the Norfolks, as I saw a photo earlier. Yeah, it's taken a bit of time. You know, it's, it's, it's been a slow burner really, as all things are. And it, 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 you know, 
it's just getting the sheep right yeah. and how you want them, but yeah. also what they should be with regard to the breed standard, you yeah. know. Um, and it takes time to get sheep to have good pastons, good mouths, yeah. and to be a good sheep, yeah. good length, good width, and to look powerful. Yeah. You know, that all takes time. But we're there and, you know, the hard work is paying off. No one's ever bred the perfect no. sheep because if that was the case then showing would stop yeah you know but it's a good it's a good do I enjoy showing I've met a lot of friends through it yeah um, and it's a good shop window especially for us here at, at mud shoot because it shows the wider farming community yeah and people up and down the country that a farm in the middle of London can produce high quality yeah. show winning livestock yeah I was just saying to Tom as we were walking away from the sheep there, it's amazing how accessible it is here. Like we are bang in the middle of like Canary Wharf, the O2s over there. Yep. And it, it's incredible. You think you're coming to London, you won't be able to get that, but you're queuing for two hours to get a mile. That's like, for me, from up in the middle of nowhere, which it's not. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, sometimes it can take us, especially if we're traveling out of London, Yeah, it can take us as much time to get to uh, the motorway yeah. as it can once we're on the motorway to get to our end destination. Yeah. Driving in London is a nightmare. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> um, but luckily enough for us, the transport links here yeah. are really, really good. And Mudshoot has its own DLR station. This is an open farm, so people can actually walk through areas all yes. the time. So the area that we're on now yeah. is and the main site of the farm, 32 acres, yeah. is open 24 hours a day, yeah. 365 days of the year. Um, that does bring some problems. Yeah. Um, you know, it's basically like having a footpath around every single <laughs> field that you have. Yeah. And people just come yeah. and walk their dogs, yeah. which is fine. And to be honest with you, most of the people that we have here in the local community support the farm, yeah. respect the farm. Yeah. But you know, every now and again, as with anywhere in the world, yeah. you get a few people that don't like to follow the rules. So now we've moved over from the Norfolks over to the Woodlands. Is that the full name of the breed? Yeah, the white-faced Woodlands. White-faced Woodlands, yeah. Yeah, and they're one of the largest hill breeds of sheep in the UK. Um, and, you know, I think one of the things with a lot of the sort of rare breeds is they should always be bred with their purpose that they originally had in yeah. mind yeah um, and they need to be a good functional sheep in this case that produces a, a, a decent fleece uh, a good carcass yeah. you know um, and does what it says on the tin yeah. and I mean the woodlands I've I brought the whiteface woodlands to mud shoot in 2007 yeah um, and they're one of a handful of flocks down in the southeast. Yeah. Um, I think they're a superb breed, you know, produce very good lambs, grow yeah. well. Um, and I mean, you just look at the size of them. They're, well, yeah, it's like... They're fair, fair size sheep. They're um, just going like that, I don't know if you can see, they're like fair units of ewes. They're like, they've got a good frame and I know that's testament to your breeding too. They're not all, all going to be this good, but <laughs> they're fair frame sheep. You know, like I say, got the first woodlands in 2007. Yeah. Um, then sort of had my own flock in 2014, you know. So it's a, it's been a been a few years been at this sort of job with the yeah. woodlands, and was told by a very experienced uh, woodland breeder when I first got into me helped me. Yeah. And he said to me, "There's two things you need to work on in the woodlands: teeth, yeah, and pastons, yeah." Uh, and I've tried my best. We're there with the teeth and, and I reckon we're there with the pastons. And I think one of the things that happens is a lot of, you know, with certain breeds and especially sort of the rare and minority yeah. breeds, there are a lot of hobby farmers yeah. out there. You know, people could say that I am one, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, and I'm not doing it as a, as a living. But the thing is, is what you need to have is a good sheep. Yeah, and yeah. you need to have it to be good teeth, yeah. good feet, 
good pastons. Yeah. They need, the ewes need to have good teats. Yeah. You know, and everything like that. And once you know what a good sheep is, yeah. you can apply that to any breed yeah. that you decide to keep. Bang on, yeah. Whether it be a Soe or a Suffolk, yeah. you know, whether it be a Bore or a Berrichon, mm. you've got all of these different breeds that, in theory, they should all be a good sheep. Yeah. And then they've got the breed characteristics, yeah. which varies quite a lot. So the farm got its name yeah. Mud Shoot because when the docks around here, when mm. they were being formed, yeah. they were all dug out and the silt and mud was pumped here to yeah. this site in great big chutes. Okay. And generally the area, the Isle of Dogs, historically was uh, the floodplain or one of the floodplains of the River Thames. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if you sort of look at the way that we are, it's all hill, like it's like undulating hills a bit, and yeah. you know, up and down and everything yeah. like that. And that's because it was all sculpted into these mounds and banks yeah. and stuff like that with all of this waste material. Yeah. Um, so yeah, mud shoot got its name because mud was pumped here in great <laughs> big shoots. So we've got the Oxford Downs and and we've got a smaller flock of these. But yeah. The Oxfords have been at Mud Chute. They were here when I started yeah. um, and we've continued it. They're a downland sheep breed, so the other two breeds that we've seen fall into the Hill and Heath yeah, category. Yeah. Um, the Oxfords are a downland breed. They are the largest downland yeah. breed with the senior ewes weighing 90 kilos yeah. or thereabouts and the tups sometimes being upwards of 120. Yeah. Uh, I really like the Oxfords. Um, they're probably my favourite out of the downland breeds. Yeah. When you don't have to do anything with them. Yeah. <laughs> the moment it comes to foot trimming or shearing, yeah. you know, it's a different story. Yeah, yeah. And that's probably the reason why the Oxford numbers here haven't grown too yeah. much because it's me that does all the shearing and everything <laughs> like that. The whole thing is with the sort of rare breed movement and stuff mm. like that, it's about conserving our agricultural heritage yeah. and history. Yeah. These are not museum pieces, no. these are actual working animals yeah. that you can make a living from yeah. if you run them in the right sort of way. Yeah, they're not in the pets, right they're way. still farms. No, absolutely. Yeah. So we're an open farm. We see probably yeah. somewhere in the region of about 16,000 school children a year. Yeah. That's without including the families that visit every day and yeah. weekends yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but we are a working farm. We produce lamb, we produce beef, we produce pork. We, that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's getting that message out there because I'd find it a little bit hypocritical if I was telling people about you know eating less meat but of a better quality and think about yeah. what you're doing, support British Ag, if I wasn't putting into that. Yeah, yeah, okay, it's total sense. You know, one of the biggest, I think, claims that the UK sheep industry doesn't shout out about enough, really, is the fact that we've got 68 or more native breeds of sheep. That's yeah. more indigenous sheep breeds than any other country in the entire world. Yeah. That is something to be proud yeah, of. Yeah, most definitely. The fact that a lot of the big sheep industries around the world are based on British breeds. Yeah. You know, the Suffolk, the Romney, the Dorset, yeah. you know, we're a little tiny island yeah, yeah. in the grand scheme of things, but we've produced this amazing variety of very adaptable and versatile sheep breeds, which is something that we should be really really proud of it. So we're now, um, I don't know what's the best way to put it, we've come to see a variety of different animals away from the sheep. There's a few sheep in here too. In here we have, I'm not, I've no idea if goat breeds but <laughs> what do we have in here? So these are Anglo-Nubians. Yeah. Um, the Anglo-Nubians are one of the premier sort of dairy goat breeds in the UK. A very friendly breed. Yeah. Um, and the kids are incredibly cute because their ears are nearly as long as what their legs are when they're first born. He's got fantastic ears, hasn't he? Yeah, so that's the Billy at the back and he's got that incredible sort of curly hair on his head, but the whole thing with Billy goats, don't get too close to them because they have an incredibly bad habit of peeing on their heads and shoulders. <laughs> and that is what gives them that very, very, very distinctive uh, smell, which is not the one. Hello. The pens go round. These are these are one of the. There's four of these sort of concrete structures on yeah. the farm, and they are called gun sites. Yeah. And the gun sites are where there were four anti-aircraft guns that were here at Mudshoot during the Second World War, because Mudshoot and the guns were the first line of defence to the working docks. Yeah. Um, 
from the from the German sort of invasion and stuff like that. And we've got a few pens of goats. We've got that main pen of Anglo Nubians there. There's a few in there. We've then got a sow and litter, but we'll have a little closer look at those yeah. in a minute. And we've got the Guernsey goats. So these are golden Guernseys, and these are one of four um, native rare breeds of goat in the UK. Um, I think they're probably the prettiest of the, well, the rare breed goats, but I think they're pretty goats yeah. anyway. Um, they come in a range of different colours. Um, and yeah, we've got the billy goat running in there with them, so we're hoping for quite a few um, kids. They're definitely friendly. <laughs> so we went from sheep to goats, and now we're on to pigs. We are one of the two breeds that we have here at Mudshoe is the middle white. Yeah. This sow here and her litter of five, not that you can see all of them, they're all buried <laughs> in the straw. Um, she's one of an incredibly rare bloodline. Um, and some of the middle white sows in the UK are very restricted geo geographically with yeah. regard to their spread. Right. So her and another one of the, another two of the sows that we've got here are part of the project to try and spread out yeah. those bloodlines genetically. Yeah. Um, so she's had quite an important litter. Um, and last year we were involved in a project with the Junior Pig Club, which we provided a middle white boar bred here at yeah. the farm um, for export to Japan. Yeah. And he was exported there as part of a consignment of pedigree British pig breeds yeah. for the Japanese government yeah. and the new pig producing yeah. unit that they have there. Yeah. To be the first ever city farm and first yeah. ever, to my knowledge, rare breed approved farm park to have <coughs> exported a pedigree pig yeah. is amazing. <coughs> It's almost like being at home here, so we've come all the way to London and we've got a Tamworth. Yeah, so <laughs> the Tamworth is the other breed of pig that we keep here. Um, and, you know, we've got a complete, they're completely different. And one of the things that people always assume is that pigs are pink. Yeah. You know, so we, we did have large blacks here as well. So we had ginger pink and black pigs. So it's just trying to show people that just like, well, just like us, animals come in all different shapes, sizes yeah, yeah. and colors. Um, and we try and get away from that stereotype of all sheep being white, and yeah, all yeah. pigs being pink, you know? So we've got this lovely lady here. Very chatty. I tell you what, my dad would be in heaven here with the amount of chickens. That's his <laughs> like big passion, dad. And I bet what? I bet I've seen over 300 chickens, ducks, poultry. So we've just got back from walking around the farm. It's been an absolutely incredible experience. And I think you can just see from behind Tom how much of a success they have been in the past. It's absolutely incredible to see all the stuff you've been doing. And it's been an absolute pleasure to come and actually see you well, in no, person. It's, it's been really fun. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. And I'm glad that you enjoyed your trip to a farm in the middle of London. No, it's been, it's, it's sort of really different. and. Um, if you haven't already, I'd recommend just to come for a lot because it's been incredible. So massive thank you for having me. And I thank you very much indeed. Yep, so guys, if you did enjoy the video today, please tap that like button, subscribe to the channel. And also, if you haven't already, go and check Tom's Instagram out and the farm's Instagram. I'll put the links in the description. They'll be on screen now, so check those out. And most of all, I'll see you next time and thank you for watching.